So to the people that say Bush could have been behind it, I don't know if the credibility is if Bush was behind, you know, like uh, uh, 9-11 for money and all this other stuff. But it, it, can I say a little bit for my own level of skepticism that maybe there are somebody on the inside that they could care less about legacy. They want to figure out a way how to maximize their job at the White House to make money. And we have a president today that's done that. You've seen it. You've read it. It's been all over the place that you use that last name in the job, and Clinton's been cr- uh, criticized for that. Uh, uh, he's been criticized for that. Biden, a lot of people have been criticized for that. So do some people get in and use their ability to persuade? And I can only imagine, like, if there's a meeting and everybody's sitting there saying, President Bush, there, I, 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 I'm, uh, we have very strong uh, uh, data that there's weapons of mass destruction. And then you ask the question, what do you think we should do? I think we should attack and, you know, uh, uh, defend uh, our country because if we don't, we seem like we're weak and we're not doing our part and we have to do something about it right now. And then boom, you come out and you give the message. You know, it's like, oh my God, this is crazy. This is amazing. And then later on, like, there was no weapons of mass destruction. So maybe somebody manipulated a way to get somebody to make a decision that they would have never supported themselves. I don't know if I'm uh, making sense. It's a long winded question I'm asking, but you don't think somebody that gets inside has negative motives that will use it in a way to monetize and make money? Because that's what a lot of people in politics have been criticized for doing. No. no I, you don't I, think so. First of all, George Tenet didn't come to the conclusion that Saddam had WMD. The CIA did. His agency did. His experts, his analysts. I don't know who the head of Egyptian intelligence is, but he didn't come to the conclusion. His analysts did. Same thing with Israel, it's same thing with He's France, etc. He's the guy, no? Yeah, but it's not like they make up the facts. They have their teams of experts who go and find the facts, find well, with, find the allegations, find the beliefs, the conclusions that they can put together. But let me let me talk to you about intelligence, generally speaking. One of the things that I learned at the White House is intelligence is maddening. You know, on the TV shows, people make it look like, oh my God, the envelope just came in. We opened it up, and here's the report from our right. agent in the field. We got the goods. Holy, take action! And in come the paratroopers. Most intelligence reports are mindlessly frustrating because they're, we have reasons to believe X, but then there's also Y. And then we have people who tell us Z. Our analysis shows it could be X, Y, or Z. Huh. This is what you get for most intelligence reports. They'll put a probability on it. They say, oh, our assessment is the probability leans in the direction more of X, but we don't discount Y. You read one of these things and you're like, what? what What's your conclusion? Give me a conclusion. That is why most intelligence reports work. It's like a, a consultant WMD from like a, like, a, like a McKinsey or Gartner. You hire them and they say, you know, our assessment is 62% chance. This is where you're losing your money. And is it kind of like that? Well, it's, it's more because the other side, North Korea, Iran, Russia, China, gets to hide things. And it's not like we can just walk in and say, give me your stuff. You can't hide it anymore. I need to know. Well, that's, the that's whole our game job is to, to keep be a you, better intelligence, but, no? Yes, but my point is it doesn't always lead itself to 100% declarative knowledge. It leads itself to surmising, believing, taking things and trying to piece it together. In the case of WMD, they put it together, and with the exception of the State Department intelligence, one of 17 different intelligence agencies in the United States, with the exception of state, every single American intelligence community concluded. It wasn't that it was likely. It wasn't that it was probable. They concluded Saddam had stockpiles of biological and chemical. Does that mean 100%? What is the concluded? Because I, I like what you said. There's a 60%, 80% chance. There's yeah. X, Y, or Z. What number did they give? To CIA WMDs? would never put a number on it. Okay. They're smart enough bureaucrats not to do that. Uh-huh. Um, but the famous quote was when George Tenet said to George Bush, it's a slam dunk that he has WMD. Okay, so now, uh-huh. so, so, so slam dunk that he's given that that's coming from a guy, George Tenet, who was the director of CIA since 96. 96 to 01 September, that's five years of experience being there. You, you have enough time to know who's on your team, who's uh, capable, who's not, who you have to fire, who you have to keep. It's not like you don't have that experience to do that, right? So uh, I don't know. All, all I think about is like uh, President Trump. Okay, guy becomes a president. You know how some people yesterday were debating to say who's going to be on the Republican, the Republican stage to debate, right? And we're at this dinner, everyone's kind of throwing their names. Well, let me tell you, you know, we know obviously Trump's going to be there. Well, what do you think about DeSantis? Well, I think he has to do it because he's got a perfect resume right now. Why wouldn't you do it? You know he's going to do it. And uh, the other person I think that's going to be there is from uh, Georgia. It's, uh, 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 what's his last name? Um, Brian Kemp. 
Not Kemp. It's a, a, a Ratzenberger. Oh, man, it's another name. Anyways, I'll think about. It. I'll say the name. Well, the governor of Georgia. People are talking about him running for president. What's Brian Kemp? Brian Kemp. Kemp. Okay, yeah, but, but then I, maybe I'm missing it up with another name. And then I said, what about Zeldin? So oh, Zeldin's not capable. He's very boring. I said, dude, the guy lost by only five percent in New York to Hochul. What are you talking about? Yeah, but he's boring. They're trying. I said, I know. I'm, I know they're trying to get him to become the chairman of RNC, but he's not running to be there because he thinks he's going to be president. Sometimes people run to get a job. Like a lot of people run to get a job on the administration of who they think is going to win. Okay, hey, hey, you sit this one out, I'm going to give you this job. Hey, you sit this one out, I'm going to give you this job. And it's a negotiation, right? Kind of like that day we all saw Elizabeth Warren, Amy, Bernie, everybody just sits it out. Hey, we're all getting behind Biden and er, here's what you're going to be doing. Fantastic. We're all happy. This kind of worked out. So I, 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 I'm convinced um, I'm convinced we were debating uh, James DiEugenio. He wrote the book, uh, JFK Revisited, with uh, Oliver Stone, and he's turned into a movie documentary, all this stuff. And I said, the swamp killed JFK, no? Well, yeah, of course the swamp killed JFK. The swamp killed Lincoln, no? No, it wasn't Lincoln. I said, well, you know, it wasn't swamp, no. Well, you know, it's you know, all this other stuff. So, well, he was kind of doing stuff that his own party didn't like, civil rights, all this. What are you talking about? Well, yeah. Well, the swamp kind of went after Reagan. Well, not not necessarily. Well, Reagan was kind of trying. Well, the swamp went after swamp went after Trump, right? Yeah, well, well, then who is not part of the swamp in politics today? Well, what are you talking about? Who is not part of the swamp? Give me names today that are not part of the swamp that have roles inside. They're silent. They can't say anything. Is McConnell swamp? Is Biden swamp? Is Obama swamp? Is, you know, Bush, all these names you're going through to be part of the swamp. So for me, um, some people want a job for resume. Some people want it for a nicer profile on Wikipedia. Some people want it because they want to brag about it. Some people want it to make money. You don't know everyone's positive and negative motives. All I'm saying is when, when President Bush is picking his team and you're bringing them inside, if CIA can't find out for a fact if, if WMD was right, how does President Bush, or not just President Bush, any other president, know for a fact people you're bringing in, their motives are positive or negative? Maybe some of these other guys, the Dick Cheney's of the world and Donald's motives were negative. Maybe his is pure, but others are negative. Do you think that responsibility lies on the person that picked those people or no? All right, let me get down to the brass tacks on this. Do you think that George Tenet gave Bush the advice or gave him the information that he gave him about WMD because George Tenet wanted to make money? No, I'm, not, I'm talking about Rumsfeld and Dick Cheney. I'm, I'm okay. talking about okay. the, the, the thing about Tenet is he should have fired Tenet. I don't keep a Tenet. Why do you keep a Tenet? His loyalty is not for you. You get rid of a tenant. I, I don't. Your dad was working with the CIA. Your father, like, if there's anybody, I'm I'm trying to see who gave the advice to keep tenant. Who was it? You, your dad's got a lifelong resume of all this stuff. So maybe a part of it for me is not even on W because I'm convinced George would have called, W would have called his father to say, hey, what do we do with tenant? And his father probably gave him some kind of fatherly advice. And 10 percent of the influence is probably from props. He says, okay, let's keep tenant. Why are you keeping tenant? Right, I think. George Bush would just disagree with you on this one okay. uh, for the exact reasons I said before. You know, during the transition, he interviews Tenet. He likes Tenet. He thinks Tenet's not political and Tenet's knowledgeable. Simple as that. And it's, it wasn't like he had his guy. No president wants to have his guy at CIA. What you want is an honest broker at CIA who will tell you the facts, whether you like the facts or don't like the facts. Slam dunk? That's, it's a fact? That's what he believed because his that's, his, that's I mean, it is what the CIA but concluded. That, but to, to, to say, Ari, you, you and I, you're an odds guy. If you like sports, it's all about odds. We're in the odds game. It's a slam dunk. You know, like when, uh, who was the one guy that said Schiff? Adam Schiff? Is it Adam Schiff? The, yeah, the yeah. In, in, interest no Congressman, yes. Yeah, uh, you listen, it's proven. We have uh, uh, intel. Listen, it's Russia, just Russia. 100%. And, oh, okay. What are you talking about? All right. like, so with all the craziness taking place, I believe future looks bright. If you believe future looks bright, get your latest future looks bright hat of Valuetainment. It says future looks bright here. Future looks bright here. We got them in white. We got them in black. We got them in red. Our black on black sold out. These are about to sell out. If you haven't ordered one yet, we had a person in Michigan bought one. Then he bought three. Then when those three people weren't in the office, they had to order 58 of them. Because people wanted the future looks bright hat, especially during times like this, because ain't nobody saying future looks bright. To order your future looks bright hat, click over here. And to watch the entire podcast, click here. Take care, everybody.